Hello and welcome to another video. Now this is about sketching the curves of parabolas and there's only one formula I need you to know. If you know that, forget about any other formula because they are not important and they might get you in trouble because you may confuse them and because there are too many of them and you don't need any of them. The only formula that you need is this. So what about the K and the H? We don't need all that. What about the, we don't need all that. Why don't we need them? I'm gonna show you. When the parabola is Y squared equals X, what you actually have is a graph where the two arms are like this. But when you change it to x squared equals y, well, you go back to your usual parabolic uh, graph, which usually looks like this, where the arms go up. Now, if we change the sign, we put a multiplication we multiply by a negative one, okay, what's gonna happen is the directions will just change. So this that was positive will become negative when you have something like y squared equals negative x. It's just gonna go this way. And then if you had x squared equals negative y, it's just gonna go um, this way. And that's all you need to know about what these curves are gonna look like. The first decision you can make is, what direction is my curve gonna go? Well, you have to rewrite this expression to look like this, then you'll know if there's a negative sign, then you'll know where it's gonna sit. Is it gonna sit here, or is it gonna move up or down, right or left? Let's do that. Because right now, for all what we've done, the vertices, this is the vertex. The vertex is at the origin. Why is it at the origin? Because there's nothing being added to y or subtracted. Nothing is being added to x or subtracted. So that's why we keep sticking to the origin, 0, 0. But as soon as you have some numbers around them, those are the numbers that determine the new vertex. Okay, everything else, you just do addition and subtraction. You don't need to know the formula. So let's do it. So remember what I said. The only formula you need to know is this one. Now, if x squared was what had the square, if it was x squared in this expression, not y squared, then you just need to switch the, the letters. That's all. You don't need to learn anything new. Just put the one that has a square on this side and leave the other one on this side with the 4p multiplying it. So let's transform this expression to look like this by completing the squares. And that means y squared minus 6y we're going to move this to the other side, it will be 28x minus 65, okay, minus 65. Now, to complete these squares, it's going to be y squared minus 6y, half of negative 6 squared is going to be plus 9, equals 28x minus 65. We have to add that 9 back, otherwise we'll have a one-sided equation. Now, this is a perfect square because it's y minus 3 squared. And it's equal to um, 28x minus 56. Well, if you see, we can take out 28x. It's going to give us 28 into x minus 2. And then you have y minus 3 squared. So instead of us having y squared equals something x, something has happened. Remember our original vertex what was at the origin 0 0 now the points have moved this one has moved three to the right remember transformation this has moved three to the right this has also moved three to the right if you don't know if it went to the right or not just write y minus three equals zero you get y equals three if you can get confused okay and this one too right x minus two equals zero x equals 2. So you know that x is going to be 2 and y is going to be 3 at the vertex. Let's go identify the new vertex. So it's not the origin now, 
it's at the point two three so let's go to point two three so let's write vertex we'll come back to that so two three will be somewhere here mm -hmm. so that means because our curve remember our curve is supposed to we should have that picture on our minds even before you start sketching or doing any calculation that your curve is going to look like this it's going to go this way Okay, it has to face the right hand side because what you have is this. At this point, this is positive. You see, not what is inside. This is positive. There's also positivity on this side. So you can't have anything on the negative side. So you're going to have it on the positive side of X. And if it was up, you have it on the positive side of Y. So we're going to have a curve that goes this way. We just don't know how wide it's going to be. And we're going to get there later. So let's make a dotted line just to show us where um, our focus is going to be okay so the vertex is at the point two three what else do we need well we just need to know how wide this is going to go we want to know so this is the vertex what is the focus remember that this is what tells us the focus that's why I told you to remember this formula and memorize it that's the only thing that you need a formula for okay so you see this 4p has the equivalent value of whatever is here so you can say that 4p is equal to 28 and P is equal to 4 this 7 I'm sorry so now that we've gotten this P, what do we need it for? I promise you, this is the most important number for you to get while you're trying to sketch a curve. Because the other important number is, or numbers, are two and three just for you to know where the vertex is. Now that we've got the vertex, you see, our vertex is here. But we need to find where the focus is and the directrix. Remember, the directrix will be somewhere here. We just don't know how far we should go. That's how far you should go. Seven steps away from the vertex in either direction. If you go forward, you're looking for the focus. If you go to the left, you're looking for the directrix. That's how this works. So no formula. Don't memorize it. Just get this P and say, I'm going to go to the right Remember, this is the X coordinate, okay? From X equals two at the vertex, I'm gonna go seven steps to the right, which means you'll be adding seven to two. That's where those formulas show up, okay? Don't memorize it. Just know that I've gotta add this number to this because I'm moving along the X axis, okay? If the curve was facing up, then you say you're going along the Y axis, and this is the one you'll be dealing with, okay? But right now we're dealing with the X axis, Okay, and why are we dealing with the x-axis? Because it is the y that has the square. That's how you reason these things through. So at this point, you will say that the focus, okay, is the original, what was the original? 2 plus 7, which gives you 9. And this doesn't change because there's no movement along the y-axis. You're good. Okay, what else do we need to do? Well, let's identify this point here. It's the point nine three because you have to move seven steps to the right. So, um, oh, this is just not correct. It's supposed to be two three. So the directrix is here. Okay. So if you move, that, it's going to be nine right here. So this is your focus. Okay. That's our focus. What else do we need to do? Oh, the directrix. Remember, you have to move the same seven steps to the left. I said nine here was seven, but it lead us to nine. So if you get here, this is gonna be um, from two, you go seven steps back from here, it's gonna be negative five. So it's gonna be somewhere here. Oh, what happened? So that's gonna be negative five. And that's your directrix. <laughs> that's so crooked. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be your directrix. Absolutely. Okay, let's write the equation of the directrix also, so we can write it here. 
is the line x equals negative 5. That's it. What else is done? We said we're good. Remember, we know now our curve is going to go this way. This will be the focus, and it's going to come this way. Uh, we just don't know how wide it's supposed to be, uh, how the curve is. Is it supposed to be like this or like this? Well, the secret to it is still here. I love this. See, that's why I told you this is important, okay? So the absolute value of 4p is just 28. Let me just write the formula. I, I don't want you to remember formulas. I just want you to double this number. Just double it. It's going to give you 14. And that's how wide you have to go from here. So just to help you, you do this. For those of you who like formulas, you can say that this is the, um, this is the focal width. That's how wide it's going to be at the focal point. Okay, it's equal to the absolute value of 4p, which is still this number. See, that 4p is there. You don't need to do any. That's how wide it's going to be at the focal point. It's going to be as wide as the absolute value of 4p. Why did we use absolute value? Because sometimes 4p is not positive. So remember, we just it's just for math sake, okay? You don't have to bother yourself with the absolute value sign. Just know that what you, that's what you're gonna get. It's just 4p, it's gonna be 28. If it says it's negative 28, well, you know distance cannot be negative, so you know it's 28, okay? So, but you don't go in the negative direction. So at this point, it's gonna be 28 wide, and the middle of it will be this line, which means if you go up here, you're gonna go 14, down here you're gonna go 14 so let's just do 14 14 or I would just double this number instead of you having that formula in your brain this P is powerful that's the meaning of P powerful okay so 14 steps up from here is gonna be um, if you add 14 to 3 it's gonna be 17 so I'm gonna have a number like this okay so that's a point on the curve and if I go 14 steps down here it's gonna be um, here, right here. Oh, there's also already a mark there. That's it. So I can sketch my curve. Ah, boom. Brilliant. <laughs> Did you see that? It's very easy. You don't need to memorize anything. You just need to get the vertex, get the P, and everything you do has to do with the P. Now you can write the formula because you know what you did here. What did you do here? You had this two and you added the seven to it, but you didn't add anything to this. So you can say that the focus actually would be equal to that original value. I don't know what you use, H or K, I don't care. See, it even confuses me. Stick to the knowledge, not the formulas. If you learned something in this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, give it a positive comment in the comment section. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell so you know when the next video shows up. I am so happy for you because you just found the secret of parabolas. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.